Africa has been home to some of the world's greatest leaders. Some of these leaders happen to be women. Women who ruled with power, wisdom and precision. They were African queens who left incredible and permanent marks down in history. In this video, we bring to you one of the greatest women in African history, King Ahebi Ubabe. Ahebi Ubabe was king and warrant chief of Enugu Ezike in Nigeria. She was the only female king in colonial Nigeria, an era in the history of Nigeria where the region was ruled by the United Kingdom from the mid-19th century until 1960 when Nigeria achieved independence. She was a slave married to a deity, a runaway, a sex worker, a headman, a warrant chief and ultimately a female king. She was a strong leader of her people, yet also a collaborator empowered by and serving the British colonial regime. Ahebi Ugbabe was born in the later part of the 19th century to Ugbabe Ayibi, a farmer and palm wine tapper, and Aneku Ame, a farmer and trader in Umwida, Enugu Ezike. She had two brothers and no sisters. She lived with her mother's family in Unedu for a brief period before returning to Umwida. After her return, she did not stay long before running away. She later had to escape Igala land. Ahebi was running from an order for her to be married to a female deity as punishment for her father's crime. This punishment is known as Igoma Ogo, which means to become the in-law of a deity. Here in Ghana, this rite is referred to as the Trocosi system. Her family had gone through a series of unfortunate events when she was 13 and 14. The farm yielded little, illness spread, and trading was low. Her father had gone to a diviner, someone who was perceived as knowing the unknown. This man correlated the events to the wrath of the goddess Ohe due to his crime. During her forced exile, Ahebi became a prostitute and used this form of work to her advantage. Along her travels, Ahebi learned to speak numerous languages such as Igala, Nupe and Pidgin English. Her success and independence helped to redefine sex work in Igbo culture, from servitude to a voluntary profession. Her sex work and linguistic skills gave her access to the king and the British divisional officer, who not only facilitated her return to Enugu Izike, but supported her claim to the office of headman, warrant chief, and later Eze, which means king. Ahebi's reign began a few months after she returned to Igboland from exile. She was the only person in her village able to speak with the British. She replaced the aged and increasingly incompetent headman, Ugu Okegu, who was unable to communicate with the British. She was made the only woman warrant chief in all of colonial Nigeria in the British native court. British District Officer W. H. Lloyd said Ahebi was a lady of influence and power. She was intelligent and of a quiet disposition. When she spoke, it is usually to the point and sensible. Although Ahebi commanded the respect of her people, she sealed seeds of resentment by conscripting forced labor and imposing a census and a British tax. The Igbo people did not believe that human beings should ever be counted. This census caused the women's war in southern Iboland. The Women's War, or Abba Women's Right, was a period of unrest in colonial Nigeria over November 1929. At first, Ahebi easily suppressed whatever resistance to her kinship existed because of her British backing. She amassed wealth and power, but ultimately fell from grace when the extent of her multiple gender and power transgressions became too much for her community. 
she overreached her ambition and violated a social norm by attending a spiritual masquerade ritual with her own mask. This ritual was only for men. She didn't understand why it was a taboo for women to control masquerades. She was a king and felt she deserved her own masquerade. She went as far as showing up at a festival in her own mask. Even though she got quite the blowback for it, she stood her ground because she believed in equality of the sexes. The male elders and Ahebi went to court to settle the case and the British sided with the male elders, undermining Ahebi's rule. Ahebi Ubabi cultivated an atmosphere of spiritualism to solidify an image of all-powerful rule. She used pre-colonial traditions to push this spiritualism and therefore power. She also used this to augment her gender to effectively make herself king. Another way that Ahebi asserted herself as a man was she collected multiple wives, many of whom were runaways from abusive husbands. They were allowed to come and go as they pleased and do whatever they wanted, including having sex with whoever they pleased. And if they had kids, the kids bore Ahebi's name. She also had multiple servants who would help her. The masquerade debacle led her to lose the support and respect of many of her constituents, but she managed to remain in power till her death. Not willing to risk any man messing it up, she performed her own burial rites just before she died. She did not trust that her society would accord her a befitting burial. She intended to perform the rite in such a magnificent manner that her society would never forget that an incredible being such as herself had lived. Her living funeral rite included gunfire, animal sacrifice, and glorious music of remembrance. Ahebi died in 1948. Although she was a woman, she was buried according to the local customs for burying men.